Hello everyone, this is Julie uh, from August Birdsong and um, I wanted to bring you a, a quick tutorial on how I made um, this journal out of a um, um, file folder. And first I'll just do a walkthrough with you. This is just sari silk that I uh, tied on a grommet here on the front. And um, this is just collage I put together on it. Uh, once I had the, the basic just foundation of the collaging started. And in hindsight, maybe I should have secured this on the back, but I kind of liked the little, the little uh, eyelet showing. Uh, so at the time I did it that way. And here you have the um, first cover of the file folder open with collage. And then this is a small journal that I just made out of some Tim Holtz paper, scrapbook paper I still had. And these are just some digital um, ledger pages that um, I downloaded from um, a digital... Um, kit from Bohemian Crafting and I ended up it was a full page but I cut the uh, page down to fit this smaller size journal and the journal uh, here just basically here is just like about an eight eight inches and a quarter by this small journal by roughly about about six and three quarters inches and so with centimeters oh let's see that's millimeters I'm gonna hold off on the on the um, the other form of measurement for right now because I'm not sure if I do that right with this um, but so inches again this is about um, what did we say here? Roughly eight and a, a quarter by six and roughly, maybe I'm actually more like six and a half. Um, we'll check when I pull it out. But you can see I just put some pages in and it's just some elastic here holding it down. So I'm going to just pull it out right now and you'll be able to see... I just stitched a little there. Um, I didn't stitch the whole thing in. You can kind of see the stitching right there just to keep it together. And then in this case, because of the way the ledger paper was, I glued down the first page because otherwise it would have started, um, it, it wouldn't have started with like a count and date on this side. So I did that on that side of it, that first page. And then I did it on the back page. And then what I'm going to actually use this for, I, I could use it for um, purchases and things like that, like a banking kind of ledger. I'm actually going to use it for a book ledger of books I've read. And so generally a date like, you know, um, May or June 2020, whatever title. And then over in this area, even though it says debits and credits, um, I'll go ahead and probably create some kind of like a five star rating of it, that kind of a thing. Um, or maybe if I own it or if it was a library book. But I decided I wanna kind of create a log of everything I'm reading. And so that's how I'm gonna use this. I would actually start it on this first page here, fill this page, and then you know work through it that way. But so that's kind of what what I decided to use it for. You could use it for anything you wanted. This is just a snippet of um, some sari silk and muslin that um, I had left over. And actually, it was a longer piece that I just cut down to fit this, mainly because I just wanted, I didn't necessarily want to do collage on it, but I wanted just some texture or colors to kind of coordinate with this page. And this is sort of yellow and orange and sunny and cheerful. And then this had the blue sari silk there. So this was actually one of the last things I put in the book 
after all the decorating and collaging and, and even the binding and stuff like that had been done. And if you look, this is another just uh, snippet roll I put along the spine here, um, just to kind of hold the elastic band in place there and the one on the back of the book. You can see there's some elastic here that I'll be getting to. Um, and here's the, the back collage work that I did uh, on that side, um, on the back of it. So going back to the front, and I'm gonna just set that aside. You open it up, this is where the small journal was. And then this, when I first put this together, is, is the collage spread I did. So I did two separate pages, because I knew all along I wanted to put a little journal in there. Um, and then here is this collage with um, the bird of prey. And it says, give the historian something to write about. And that's a quote from uh, a set of stamps by Dina Wakely. And it has, I don't have it right in front of me here, so I'm, I'm not going to pull it out. But it has um, kind of like old photographs of women on the, the set of stamps by Dina Wakely that that came from. Uh, and then it's just ephemera that I place behind it. And the, the again, just snippets of cloth there. But this page here has two pockets. There's this little side small pocket. It's just from here down. And I just had, this is actually from a napkin <clears throat> that I had decoupaged on. And then this is just a remnant of some uh, Tim Holtz paper. But I also put the ribbon, The this is actually like a cut up towel remnant. I put that bow there because again, this whole little journal is just made of scraps and remnants. Um, and I liked, you know, just the tactile feel of it and that it was sticking there right at that little indentation. And then up here is a, a bigger pocket. And I just put again, um, these were both decoupaged napkins that um, I had and I just put these were tags I had made and I just polished them up put a little paper Tim Holtz paper on the back stitched them put them some sorry silk on again um, and that's all that there was to that and so again these were just kind of afterthoughts that I added um, here is the pocket right here I could have kept it a real long pocket in this case I decided to, to kind of divide it and so you've got a place for like two or one larger medium-sized tag say and then the smaller one here but I could have just stitched down the whole side here and made it one deep pocket and that would have worked as well but you turn this and I'm going to be showing you in a minute just the skeleton of this whole journal and you come to the bigger spread that has a little bit bigger um, journal in it and again here you have this side uh, where I put uh, together a collage uh, and this is different layers if you look close behind the quote here you can see my first base layer that was just made up of, of scrap paper leftover you know just ripped up pieces from some other project once I made that um, I went ahead and did a second layer with my focal point and all. And before the focal point part came on, I had these strips of old book page that were from, let me grab them. Some of the images that, you know, are in here are cut up from an old, um, book of Audubon prints. And so I have these scraps left from it. And so what I ended up doing was taking strips, let me find a smaller piece here, strips like this cut off of the, the book page here. This was from a page that had uh, images of prairie dogs. But I kept the paper, it's just old and it's nice and it was an old used book that I had purchased online. Um, called Audubon Animals. 
And so what I did is then I just took stamps I had and I had some clear stamps that were just like these tickets and and um, let's see over on this side. Well, I put that quote. Uh, this is some of the, the paper I stamped on just with kind of uh, here you have it again, just uh, some general clear stamps. And I had done those a few weeks ago and torn them after I stamped on it. I tore them down, I inked the edges, and let me grab it. What I have them in is just a, a one of my cases here I hold everything in. And you can see, I had them ready to go like this. Doesn't matter that they were ready to go um, other than that, you know, it was one less thing I had to create from from um you know scrap this came from a stamp let me grab it here these stamps are from um it's called what studio light here you can see the picture on the back and they're called grunge stamps studio light and um i've mentioned them before but um, you can get these at um, franticstamper.com, uh, sells them, I'm pretty sure. And I know joggles.com um, is another craft store. And um, this is the stamp here. So you can see how that came from that stamp. But it, these are both from Studio Light. And um, so I just stamped them on these old book pages. And again, I did this weeks ago. I wasn't making anything. I just took a bunch of these scraps to use them up and did stamping. So the Give the Historian Something to Write About is a Dina Wakely um, stamp. This is from the Studio Light. Uh, some of them were stencils. This is from, um, I know, a Stamperia stencil. And I don't have the stencil right out right now, but it was a SeaWorld one. And again, when I got the stencil, I uh, it says like industrial and SeaWorld, but it's a Stamperia stencil or Stamperia. I, I'd say it both ways, but Stamperia stencil. And um, it came from that. So I had made it in advance. Here's another part of it. It says mechanical. Um, I would have gotten it out, but when I was first planning this video, I wasn't even thinking about it. Uh, but these are, are where these little bits came from. This is another Dina Wakely one uh, on one of her uh, kind of vintage stamp sets. It says, it's weird not to be weird. Um, I think Embrace the Different is on that also. Normal is so boring. Um, so those are the Dina Wakely. These are just sort of these kind of border strip stamps. Let me just look if they're here. I'm not sure that they're right by me right now. Um, yeah, I think I have those put away. Uh, but so anyways, those came off of that. But they were just clear stamps that I found online, um, like at Oriental Trading or uh, years ago. And they're all just different um, borders. And let me just see here, thinking about the stamps around me. That's washi tape. Sorry, I am talking to myself and looking looking over. I'll have to dig those out. They're, they're somewhere else. But they have all these, um, like these are tickets and like names of sheet music, things like that. But point, point being that all I did after I did my base collage, whoops, there's some more, is after I did the basic collaging here, I just glued down pieces of those stamp remnants on the old book paper that these images came off of. Okay, and at the time I had no idea I would end up using it that way, but that's what I did. So the focal point with the animals and the greenery and the butterflies and all of that, that came in later in the process. The beginning was just um, collaged remnants, scraps 
from Here Is My Scrap Bin. You probably have something similar. No matter how I try, it seems like it always is full with more more scrapbook pits and and things like that. And some days I feel almost claustrophobic trying to use up the paper because I I don't want it to get where it's beyond the bin. Uh, this is again another sheet of Tim Holtz scrapbook paper and I just cut this one out and uh, let's see here in inches this is roughly just a little bit over like two little notches over ten and a half across and up and down vertically it's right about at eight inches okay and um, really it could have been a little bit bigger but but not too much um, because I knew it was going to be going in there and this one I just printed out some vintage writing paper again this was from bohemian crafting eva um, has some ledger paper um, that this was from and so again it was a full sheet and i just cut it down to fit um, the book and that again just like the little one went in later and so this is the the back folder part and then here's the very back of the book so what this is made out of, and let me straighten up my mess here a minute so I can get to the next phase of this in the video, is this is simply made out of a file folder like this, okay? And um, you can use new ones. I'm a former uh, English language arts teacher and so I, I'm not working full time anymore. So I have a lot of files, uh, file folders. This is one that had the story of the dragon. It's a Ray Bradbury short story in it. And um, before that, it was for something else. Don't know what that was even about. Uh, I don't even care, you know, that that's still on there. I'll put paper over it or I can try to get it off. And if it rips, it creates some texture you can ink on. But this is how this all began. It began with just a file folder. And I wanted to create sort of a, I didn't even know. I was playing with it, you know, some sort of like a journal, but something more than just an open and closed journal. And what I was first looking at was something I had created over a year ago with a file folder you can see the top there and it was just this small little journal and I had collaged on it and decorated it but I hadn't done anything with it and I made a little bookmark at the time for it and I liked what I'd done with it and if you look I had actually used some gesso on it uh, through a stencil and so if you can see it it's sort of um, just a patchwork stencil that I used over um, over the paper and if you look this yellow is actually from a mandala um, stencil that I use spray inks through I think or if it wasn't spray inks it was just a um, and you know with a dabber um, you know what I'm talking about the things I always forget their names so I might have just taken ink off a pad and through the stencil it created that effect and like I said I made this over a year ago it's stitched it has old book pages with it um, and some other things and here I had a few little ephemera bits but it was really basic but I liked it and I thought well I'm gonna try to sort of use that idea and make something a little bit bigger and at the time I didn't know that I necessarily was gonna end up with these journals in it um, I just was like well maybe I'll add paper to it but the bigger picture evolved as I worked on it so to the next phase of this then I'm going to show you how I took this into a format that you know ended up with all the details 
And so what I've done, here's here's just the first, it's just, just a manila file folder. And what I've done here is I'm going to show you with another one. Here it is the way you just saw that one. I opened it up, okay, so it was like full length, if you can see all the way down. And I turned it, um, I guess, to the right here, creating this long vertical part. Okay, so here is the top of that original folder, but it's I've split it in half that way. And then I'm bringing up this other part of it, okay? And so what you have is the original folder. Let me just show you again. Here's the original. And I'm going to move this up a little bit so you get a broader spread of it. Okay, you have the original file folder opened up. Okay, I took the left side and, and folded it over. I took a bone folder or ruler and just pressed it down. Okay, here you have that dividing part that's normally the base, but now we have a smaller part to flip up. Okay. So you can see that there. All right, and so you have the top part. I'm going to turn it over so you can see. Here is some more teaching notes, something about organization. And here's that whole back page that would become this part, okay, on the finished journal. And so if I flip it over here, you can see this lower part, which will become this, oops, that closure is getting in the way. It will become that. But what I need to do is I need to cut along the very base of it here and uh, at the back part, okay, for that back folder. So what I've done here is I've created um, a partially done one where you can see here's that front flap and I took an exacto knife and I cut along that first baseline here right along there and I so I, I had an exacto you could use scissors um, it didn't cut super neat so I just cleaned it up the edge a little but that created the front flap okay and then I went along, it's the, the very back part too, which I guess actually what you can do is just go down this edge here, okay, with the, the knife or scissors, so that you end up with this back page cut apart too, okay? And now this center part, is also cut apart, okay? Um, and actually, I think what I'm gonna try to do, I don't know how good this is gonna go on camera, but you're basically just taking it like this, okay? Okay, and like I said, doing it right now on camera, I'm probably gonna be a little sloppier, but, and I'll have to clean the edges up. But to prove, to make my point, I just want you to see, you're kind of cutting it apart. And that's a real sloppy cut, but I can clean that up. But what I'm gonna do then, is I'm going to stitch, I've got my front cover, this is my middle part. This is where that little side pocket with the bunny card, the bunny tag, that will get put right there after I stitch, okay? And that other pocket will evolve there, okay? But the thing is, before I do any other major things, I'm going to, well, obviously clean up my edges here, but I'm going to want to go to the sewing machine and stitch it so that this middle part becomes 
I've got sorry silk thread around here. This middle part gets stitched down here and across. And if you want this little side pocket, you want to leave, whoop, that sorry silk is on me. You want to leave that there and just stitch a little bit here. And so that's what I'm showing you with the next part. All right, but this is the front cover. This is the back of the back cover, all right? And this middle part is the, the one you definitely want to stitch or glue before moving forward, okay? So let me show it to you with this then, here, okay? Front flap, you can see, flipped, flip them both open. Here I have stitched down that middle section stitched over, stitched over here to create this pocket. Again, this is, this is where the bunny can go, okay? Here's that upper pocket, but I stitched it with the back flap pulled aside, okay? And you can see I just went around here and across, and then around here, like, an L, okay, but left this part open. Now my stitching's wonky and, and all that, that's okay, especially in here, because this is all gonna get collaged over, okay? And if I flip this over, here you can see then, here is my back flap, okay? My back flap. Um, here is the page next to my back flap, which has the pockets on the other side. I'm going to collage this. I'm going to collage that. And then eventually I'll put the holes in it with the elastic, just like I did there. Okay. So see how that is right there. Here's the page. The pockets are on the other side of it. If I flip it there, here are the pockets. If I flip it here, there are the pockets, right? And then here is the front flap. Here is the front flap, okay? So let me just show you this again one more time. Hope I'm getting it all good on the camera. Front flap opened up, okay? My first little elastic Notebook will go go on the elastic here, okay, right there with the front part. There are the pockets. I flip it to the back page where the elastic will go later for my bigger pocket, or my bigger, not pocket, my bigger journal, okay? And then this can just be decorated up too. I could put pockets on this side too. The whole thing is gonna bulk up more. If I wanted to do that and have it a little bit bulkier, I think what I would do is work in a little more of a, what do you call it? Um, give myself a little more of a, a spine in there and do that with, um, you know, with one of these where you put down, you put the crease in. I did that on the front here. Let me just show you. I don't know if you can see the line real well, but where my my little uh, hole is there for the um, eyelet and all, there's actually like a mini spine. Let's see if you can see that. Do you see that there? And the way I did that is, my full pocket or my full front flap was extended and I just took I took that front flap and I knew I needed to just have a little more give there okay and so I ended up putting that in there and uh, on the front flap and it's only like what did I end up doing that at it's it at most a quarter of an inch maybe even a little bit less um, I didn't realize that the first time I made it. It's when I started to put the journal in, I realized I needed a little more, like, um, give there. You know, not so flat. So what I ended up doing, this was all collaged, 
and um, you know, uh, matte medium on it, everything it was getting pretty stiff, but I still, I went in and I put that crease in on both sides of it right there. I had to do it a few times to get it because it had a lot of layers, but I, I put that in after the fact because when I started to go with this, it, the whole thing was starting to bulk out. It didn't seem to be as big of a problem with the back one. So we'll see how it goes. But the front one just seen, maybe because the pockets are on this page and it was already coming forward because of the tucking the, the little tags in, maybe that's what caused it to feel a little bit like it, it needed a little give. Notice too that my elastic is on the flap for the cover, not in the part with the pockets. So this, well, there you can't see it as well. Here, notice it's there. I didn't go through the pocket area for the elastic. Um, and I think that that helped. And also on the back part, again, this is the panel that has the pockets on the other side. I didn't put the elastic there. I put the elastic in the back flap. And so it's right there coming down through the back. Okay, so the elastic went in the front and the back flap, not in the pocket flap. This middle part is the pocket flap. So, um, that's how I made it. I, you know, give it a try if you're, if you are interested in just trying something. Uh, it feels, I was looking for something that was sturdier feeling. Like if I put it in a bag or a purse and took it with me, it wasn't too big and bulky, um, like a bigger journal, but it still felt decorated up and, and, you know, something I could take with me. And if I want to write something on a trip or use this, you know, for something other than maybe a book journal, whatever, maybe I'm going to go to the park and read and I want to bring it with me and I want to put some quotes in here. Or sometimes when I'm reading, I'll put um, facts if it's nonfiction or, or something a historical fiction book and something I, I want to remember. I tend to, if I journal at all, it's more of in that way. It's quote collecting or observations about something that I read or saw, um, you know, somewhere. I don't, I've tried and it's just not my natural inclination to to use it almost like a diary i don't express my personal feelings and thoughts so much in words that way um i express sort of more through visual things like collage or painting and and eventually i'll i'll do something with one of my um diane reevely journals where a lot more of, of personal feelings and emotions and thoughts and stuff are expressed in a more visual way. Um, this is just more visual demonstration of my love for nature and, and working in little quotes and, you know, quirky little scenarios with the animals being more of the narrators of those things. Um, and so that's, that's it. And um, if, if you like collage, I would highly recommend this. Um, for me, honestly, if I'm totally honest, when I first um, had my base layer just, you know, just on this with uh, my base scraps of paper, my bits and pieces of, you know, everything I had Mod Podge down, I didn't like it at all. And I almost threw it out because I was like, I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what this is at that point. Um, you know, before all the, before all the final effects of your focal point and ephemera get tucked in and glued on and color and things added, it didn't look like anything, but that's how most, most of my crafting things are. They don't look like anything 
until I get the base done and I start to add you know again the ephemera the you know the the art pictures the fabric the the quotes or um stamped things and more and more I'm trying to force myself to remember to go into all of those different places where I have ephemera um you know I have ephemera again or in this case this is where I've I've put, um, you know, stamped things or stenciled things, bits and pieces, um, stamped images. These are red lead paperwork stamps that I've put on pieces of paper. And, and I've tried to keep them closer to me, if you can see all this. So that when I'm in the process of creating, I see them and think to use them. Because the more I put them away in a drawer, I forget and I don't use them. And so these are just stamped on, um, you know, some muslin, some cotton material. Um, and, I, and again, I, a stash of them, I don't know when I'll use them or where I'll use them. But they're ready to go if... Um, you know, if all of a sudden I decide, oh, yeah, I'd like something with paper um, or stamp. And these are the kinds of things that are good to do on days when you want to do something creative, but you don't have a real idea of what you want to create. Sometimes it's hard to think of an end product. It's sort of like when you're a kid and you just want to color in the coloring book. And you don't care if you finish the coloring book or if you tear any of the pages out and put them on the refrigerator because you think I did a great job coloring. You just want to color. But in this case, I just want to take my glue stick and some paper. And, you know, in this case, I used a file folder. Other times it's just, um, you know, an old book page. And I just want to take some scraps of something and start tearing and gluing. And I don't know what it's going to become and I don't know where it'll ever end up. But I just want to do that um, because the, the glue and the paper and the scissors and the tearing are just like the crayon in your hand when you're coloring. And it's just, it's sort of relaxing and, and it, it's just a way to enjoy your time quietly and it doesn't have to be a masterpiece you know our coloring books in our childhood a lot of them ended up getting torn walked on um, painted on ripped apart thrown in the trash uh, whatever but it was a way to express ourselves creatively at that moment and that's why we remember sitting and coloring in our coloring books and as adults we have our our adult coloring books are now available um and sometimes though i think the more crafts you do the higher standard you hold yourself to that it needs to turn into something important something meaningful something maybe i'm gonna sell or or give away uh, a card and that's a lot of pressure when you just want to get the glue stick out and take some torn paper and put it down. And so try to step away from the final product. And, and like the, the saying, the quote, whatever goes, it's about the journey. It's about the process, not the destination, not where is this going to end up you know, in my Etsy shop, I don't have one yet, but you know, that's, that's again, that's another step down the road. Right now I'm just getting the videos started. It's, it doesn't have to be about that perfect piece. Um, it, it's just about playing and about it turning into something and, and maybe it turns into something, maybe it doesn't, it ends up in the trash and that's okay too. Um, you've got to create some ugly art in the process of learning how to create the art that you feel like, you know, is, is something you're really proud of and, and want to do something further with. Uh, but 
sometimes I think it's just so easy to fall into that self-doubt and I'm not good at this or it doesn't look as good as I want or I thought it would. Just try to let it go and and just be like a kid with your your glue stick and you know scissors or paper and and it doesn't matter. And it doesn't matter if it ends up ugly because with mixed media, you can always slap some paint or some gesso on it or glue something else on top of it. There is no right or wrong. There's just do and see what you end up with. So I hope um, in, in the process of all this today, you learned, again, just another form of collage. And in this case, journal making. Um, and hopefully you'll, you'll go and pull your papers out and your glue stick. And if you have an old envelope or manila folder laying around, doesn't matter if there's writing on it. Uh, doesn't even matter. Maybe there's even stickers stuck to it or whatever. You know, anything you rip off is going to create texture. And if I smear some ink or some glue on it, it's going to give me even more texture. So just see where it takes you and have fun. And um, I hope I hope you come away from it feeling a little bit better about your day and um, better about yourself, that you have a craft that can help you escape into just the play that we took for granted when we were children because we never knew we'd outgrow being able to play. So have a good day. I'll see you again in another video. Bye-bye.